Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how you can bring in a remote camera feed into your OBS Studio or VMix software uh, for free with no downloads required. It's ultra low latency, so we're looking at a couple hundred milliseconds tops. And yeah, did I mention it's free? So let's jump into it. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to go to a website called vdo.ninja. So this is actually uh, software written by me, just throwing that out there. It's open source, it's free, and it works well. So there's lots of options here, but all we want to do in this in this particular setup is use add your camera to OBS. So add your camera to OBS. We don't want to do anything more than that. And we can click that and we can choose our camera settings. So uh, select our camera, select our audio source if we want it. We can select none if we don't want any. Uh, lots of options there. There's a little gear icon if we want to change the resolution of the capture. Default 720, we can go 1080, whatever we want to do. 720 is pretty good for most people, but say the V. Uh, yeah, and there's digital effects here if you want them, but, um, you know, like background blurs. Keep it simple. We hit start. Now, everything is handled for us. We are given a stream ID at the top of the page. So this is our link that we are going to add to OBS. Okay. Uh, we, we copy that link and we you know, go to our OBS. Now, if this was a remote computer or a friend, uh, you could actually preform the invite link. And so you would already have the view link ahead of time. Uh, I can demonstrate that after. But in this case, we're just going to do the basic uh, setup. So we're going to say add a browser source and you get the settings for the browser source in OBS. We can paste in the link we got from the top there. This is our view link. We can change the width and height to whatever we want, but it makes sense to set it to the same width and height that we intend to capture it. And now the most important part is to make sure we click Control Audio via OBS. Control Audio via OBS. If you check that, OBS will be able to capture the sound, which is good. If you don't check that, any sound will play out through your speakers and it will not be captured by OBS. You can leave everything else unchecked in default and then just hit OK. And within a split second, the video loads up. And if we see in the audio mixer, the browser source has audio. And we can mute that, control that, lower the volume, do whatever. So yeah, we just brought in video from Video Ninja into OBS. Now, this software will detect whether you're on a local area network or on the internet and automatically take the shortest, most efficient route. So in this case, it's staying within the lane. So it's, it's not going to the internet and coming back. It's going from my computer to my computer directly, bypassing the internet. It's smart like that. And the latency is near instantaneous. If you're going to the internet and back, there's added latency. It could be 40 milliseconds additional. It could be 200 milliseconds if it's a bad connection that's far away. But you're generally looking at very, very, very fast speeds. So near instantaneous, more than adequate for talking. And I've even seen many people uh, perform music using the software in audio only mode. Okay, so uh, that's cool. Now, let's say you want to invite a remote friend in and you want to preform the invite link. So you have a couple options. You can do group rooms and things like that. But let's try these, uh, this create reusable invite page. This just simplifies the process. Uh, there's advanced documentation and there's an advanced uh, invite generator down here. So there's lots of options to either doing things yourself, right? There's hundreds of like options or you can go to this advanced generator and do more advanced settings uh, but just by clicking on create reusable invite we can just jump in and do the very basics so we can give it a name if we want to um, but for the most part we'll just go through here look at all the settings and say you know what we don't really care about any of those settings you know, we could check uh, 1080p or 360p or 720p. We could add a password. We could do all, all, all those things. But none of that matters to me. I'm just going to hit generate the invite link. Now we have a QR code. 
So if we wanted to bring in our mobile phone, you know, we could take our iPhone, just to take a picture of the QR code and our phone will come in. Or if we're gonna bring a friend in, we can just click this link and email it to them, Slack it to them, however you intend to send this link to a friend. I just drop it in Discord and then the person will open this up in Chrome. Okay, so you send this to someone, they get it, they open it up in Chrome and they're greeted by the share your camera page. They click it. You, as the OBS studio, the person who is inviting them, you have this OBS browser source link at the bottom. You can click that. You go to your OBS. And remember that browser source? You can create a new browser source or use an old one. We paste our new view link in, hit enter, and the guest comes in. The great thing is, this link is reusable. All the links you create are reusable. Um, just FYI, you can reuse them as much as you want. You can even create custom uh, stream IDs. So I could say, hello, uh, Steve here. Have the just, uh, guest join with this custom stream ID. And when I go back to OBS, I just need to update the view link, the stream ID, hit enter, and it works. Now this guest can refresh um, and rejoin, and it will automatically, within a few seconds, reconnect and pull that guest in. So this is pretty interesting because you can create an invite link and reuse it repeatedly. And you can send the link to a friend, have them join and jump into your stream. Now, if a person does not uh, join your stream, and uh, 30 seconds go by, you might see a little spinner on the screen here just saying that it's waiting for a connection. Uh, this is just feedback for you. If you wanna hide this, right, you have the option of just adding clean to the URL. Okay. And now you can do clean output. There's a bunch of different aliases for it. But what that essentially does is it um, gets rid of any sort of overlay or any sort of help uh, information that might appear, and it will just stay transparent. And when a guest joins, the video will be there, and if a guest, uh, guest leaves, it cleans up and just hides any sort of the interface. Okay, lots of options. You can increase the bitrate. You can even do 4K video. You could change aspect ratios. You could uh, pull this in from your Android, your iPhone, uh, anything like that. Um, and if you ever do want to start getting more sophisticated, uh, you can jump into doing a group room. And that is uh, quite a bit more complicated, but the group room allows you to be a director and have multiple guests join. And you can talk to them all and kind of interact and have like a conferencing experience, but pull the video streams into OBS as well to produce your own custom layout and uh, get a really high quality production out of it with again, ultra low latency and also all for free. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is just one of many videos in the series. Thank you all for watching and check out, uh, check out for new updates on my discord, which is discord.video.ninja. And you can also reach out to me there for free support and free community support. I'm on most of the day. So uh, got your back if you need help. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching.